My mic sounds nice. Check one. My mic sounds nice. Check two. My mic sounds nice. Check three. Are you ready? Well, of course you're ready for a chat with Teresa. We are thrilled to welcome you to the introduction of the book, Hoops and Dutch by Yolanda D. Coleman. Uh, we also want to thank the sponsors and friends of Coffee Dreams, Inc., Required Cosmetics, Increase Biz Now, and the shirt designers uh, that we're wearing by Diaspora Design, Mr. Ron C. Green's Born to be Dope, Miss Felicia Watkins White from Samson's Properties, and for those of you who know, you know the Cookie Cartel. So we thank our sponsors and our friends of Coffee Dreams Inc. for their tireless support. So for those of you who know, and for those of you who don't, I want to introduce you to Yolanda D. Coleman. She is a celebrated author known for ca her captivating storytelling and her vivid character development. Her works, including Sugar Rush and Caramel Sunday, and now Hoops and Dutch, have charmed readers with their rich narratives and relatable themes. With a talent for weaving intricate plots and exploring the complexities of relationships, Yolanda D. Coleman has established herself as a prominent voice in contemporary fiction. Her books have resonated with a diverse audience, leaving an indelible mark on the literary world. Ooh. So now we're going to get started in a conversation about hoops and Dutch. So give us a little background on the characters and the compelling, unique journey of Hoops and Dutch. Well, I am really, really thankful for um, all of you who have been rocking with Coffee Dreams Inc. since 2001. That's 23 years. Uh, we only mentioned a couple of things or a couple of works that have been published. Uh, there are so many more. But right now, it's about Hoops and Dutch, who are childhood friends who are forbidden to love each other, right? Um, society, economic, stark economic contrast, um, the war on drugs, and, and so many other things that the late 80s and the early 90s um, brought upon them that kept them apart, even though they were directly across the street from each other. So Dutch and Hoops, uh, Hoops and Dutch, um, are their nicknames. Of course, uh, those were not their government names, mm. but uh, they are unique in that the world saw fit to bring them back together again. This is a spin on romance and espionage at the same time. Mm. Ooh. So there's a little bit of suspense going on between the two of them. Shout out to Gen X because these are not spring chickens. They are in their 40s and I'm not talking 40 but 40s, late 40s, pushing mm -hmm. 50. Shout out to 1974 for making a milestone. So um, that's why they are unique because there's mm -hmm. a romantic suspense going on with people in their late 40s and not in their 20s. And there are some Easter eggs in Hoops and Dutch that let you know that they are plausible characters to handle the adventures that they are about to go on. Easter eggs. Mm, mm. Drop it like it's hot. Oh. What do you think she means by Easter egg? We're going to leave that to your imagination. I just had a whole lot of things, the Easter egg hunt. But um, what themes does Hoops and Dutch explore and why are they relevant today? Certainly. So we do explore family relationships and the complexities therein, um, friendship mm -hmm. uh, at the base of um, their time together, Hoops and Dutch, and how their friendship, although Easter egg, worlds apart, mm -hmm. they are still together. Uh, we also explore um, how we can trust someone who has not been around for so long, 
like you just know without a shadow of a doubt that this mm -hmm. person has my best interest at heart. So um, there, there's a lot going on. And each chapter is as, as common with, with most of my books are written from both the male and female points of view, uh, just to give a balance. And I do my best, fellas. I do my best and I do my homework <laughs> to make sure your voice is clear. Uh, so uh, running those themes through the story and, and there, there are a few more. I'll, I'll let you uh, take some some time for yourself to develop your own sense of, oh, um, they're exploring this now, but mm -hmm. there's quite a bit of explora exploration and I leave room for the reader to decide on their own as well. Yeah, well, how do you hope the themes and messages of Hoops and Dutch will resonate with the readers? So um, because I am a woman, Gen X, shout out, 1976, um, one in particular that I did not mention earlier is womanhood, right? Um, as an evolved woman, um, I hope my female readers no longer look for permission to be a woman. What is natural to them in their womanhood. Society says one thing, our family has another narrative, our friendships have another narrative, the organizations that we're a part of, our office politics have another narrative on who we are as a woman. And I was very careful to allow Dutch to be a woman, um, void of who others thought she should be. Mm -hmm. And in, in life, we are a, a sum total of the narratives that we have collected. But oh, that moment when you become the writer of your own story is such a prize winning moment in your life where you, as, as I understand uh, women say, they have arrived, right? Mm -hmm. um, all, all too often, um, we, we are boxed um, as women in society from the time we were brought into this world. But unlocking that door, once again, Easter eggs, and, and my, my, my um, diction is very clear, but it is also very purposeful um, as it relates to that theme of womanhood. Got so it. I hope, ladies, you, you feel free um, through Dutch and that you find your own freedom in your womanhood uh, and you don't need permission to be you. Uh -huh. And you'll hear that phrase again, be you. So growing up in the late 80s and 90s in D.C., I can only imagine what that was like. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to so ask you, <laughs> well, I'm going to ask you for those of us who weren't, but how did you come up with the name um, Hoops and Dutch? OK, so um, as some people often say, you know, is there any autobiographical information in this in this text? Uh, there's a little bit of me in there, but I imagined um, in the late 80s, early 90s, um, mostly like uh, 1980, up to 1988, um, I lived in, on Stanton Road, right? Um, from the time I was born until 88, and then we, we, we located up the street. Um, there were two sides, and, and that's where this forbidden love comes from, mm -hmm. um, two sides of a road. I lived on the side where the projects were, and directly across the street were people who owned homes. And even though we could see each other, there was this dividing line that said, don't go there, right? Mm. And so I would jump double dutch with my friends on my side of the street, either in the court or out front, depending on who had the rope at the time. Uh, shout out to my Stan Road folks. Um, but directly across the street, there was always this boy. Um, we would see him and he would see us, but he could not come across the street. There was also this house called the Blue House and a rack of children lived in there, but we were forbidden to play with them, right? Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. um, I imagined for Hoops and Dutch that the girl Dutch and the boy Hoops who never came across the street in my real world mm -hmm. actually met and became friends mm -hmm. um, from the time that they noticed each other. They, they had a kinship and a bond that um, we find later that was unbreakable. Mm -hmm. um, but mom, as, and I'm not giving, giving away too much, but Hoops, who played ball, I imagined the little boy in his backyard playing mm -hmm. ball while we were jumping double dutch. Yeah. But uh, mom would not allow him to consort with such folks. Because um, like in the 80s and 90s in DC, the block was hot, drugs were rampant. And Dutch kind of was a part of that life, not her directly, but um, the stream of income in her family. Uh, was tied to uh, the drug game. Mm. So uh, 
not my son. <laughs> so that's um well we will wait until your live reading to hear about some of your favorite parts and the engaging moments in the book. <laughs> so it's intriguing what you're saying and I'm looking forward to the Easter egg hunt. Yeah. Well, so do you have plans for a sequel or other books with similar themes? Uh, well, what are some pro projects that are that we can anticipate. Well, you know, Hoops and Dutch, based on some of the market research, uh, people want a series and they want it visually. That's all I'm going to say. So if you have access to some video equipment and you want to make uh, Hoops and Dutch real, holla at your girl because she's ready. Um, so as of now, uh, Hoops and Dutch is uh, being considered for a series of books but um in the meantime in between time i still have my other projects of course the best-selling sugar rush loves elevation amazon it made it on uh, number 11 on amazon oh, wow. um in its genre so i was really proud of this you can get that on amazon and caramel sunday is also available on amazon um that was the last book i wrote 10 years ago um and if you want a copy of either one of these two books i can Send that information in the chat and um, get that out to you. I'll give you my cash app or my Zelle and get it out to you immediately. But as of now, Hoops and Dutch are going to be running around the world. <laughs> Inspiration by yeah. Lupe Fiasco. If you know who that is, he has a song called uh, Tokyo Japan. Uh, mm. Easter egg hunt. Find it in the book when you get there. Well, we thank you for joining us. For a chat with Teresa featuring Yolanda D. Coleman in her latest book, Hoops and Dreams. And we look forward to hearing from you your feedback and your reactions to um, this compelling story of the late 80s, 90s, DMV living and lifestyle. So go out. Once the book drops, make sure you buy a buy a couple share a few and make sure you read and host some reading yes i'm available reading for book signings books. <laughs> yes i think i'm gonna take a cookie and get my wine and go on and, and switch and get ready for this reading how about you yeah i'm gonna join you okay the cookie go down go ahead and get my drink on we'll see you in a few after these messages Thank you. All right. I think that was good.